Recently I recorded a short clip for YouTube uh, talking about a book that had uh, lifelong influence on me and my thinking and my feelings and it was by the French romantic novelist that wrote Les Miserables, uh, Victor Hugo. It's interesting that in quite a different way in the influence on my life, another French novelist uh, whom I have not read, but whose book turns up in a famous work of art by a Dutch painter, has moved me very deeply too. In Melbourne, Australia, we have just had a, a, a very popular, very massively attended um, art show of the works of Vincent van Gogh. Van Gogh, a lot of English people say, and I probably haven't got the accent quite right, but the Dutch make it sound like they're clearing their throat when they say his surname. But Vincent, of course, is well known to all of us through some aspects of his story that are very much questioned in recent scholarship. One is whether, in fact, he chopped off his ear to give it to a, a prostitute friend of his. There are some real questions as to the rea uh, reality of that story. And then, of course, the story that he committed suicide. And there is even some question as to whether he suicided or whether he was murdered. There's all sorts of loose stories. But we know a lot about Vincent uh, through many sources, not just his paintings. Of course, as I understand, he only ever sold one painting in his lifetime to give him any uh, income from his amazing vision and ability to put that on canvas, so to speak. But um, we all know about those strange stories about his ear and about his death. And we know so much about his paintings. I've always loved Vincent's paintings. And it may seem strange to a lot of you that my reasons are rather spiritual. You see, if we want to know the most about what is expressed in his paintings, it would pay for us to reach out to some of the sources of his early life. If you go online, you can find a, a, a well-recorded um, text of the first major sermon he preached. It may surprise a lot of you, but he longed in his Dutch setting to be a minister. His mother and father were profoundly committed Christians and um, he greatly admired them. It's kind of strange because on the one hand, some of his writings to his, to his brother, Theo, uh, are quite overwhelmingly positive about the godliness and goodness of his mum and dad. But I've also, also found quotes that indicate that he thought his dad and mum really didn't get it when they read the Bible. He interpreted the text very differently. Vincent wanted to be a preacher. I've read the first sermon that was ever recorded. It's very Dutch, very theologically careful and thoughtful, which is part of the kind of Dutch culture. And um, I suppose if you're a bit of a theologian, it's kind of Calvinist, evangelical view of God. 
But I've also read a volume of, uh, of his letters to his brother Theo. And they probably express more of his spiritual journey and tragedy than anything else. He went to theological seminary, but certainly for Vincent, the seminary w was a disaster. I'm not too sure. I don't know enough details, but maybe he was difficult to get on with. He was certainly a questioning, searching, incredible, non-conformist mind, as his artwork shows. So I'm not sure whether his exit from seminary was because he couldn't pass the exams or whether it was because he challenged some of the hard line, strict Calvinistic theology of the Dutch Christian intellectuals. But Van Gogh didn't fit the system well, he left seminary and he went to a missionary Bible teaching college. He fell out with them too for a different reason. In that college, he had this passionate love still for marginalised people. He'd had that because he'd studied the teachings of Jesus and he was convinced to be truly Christian. You needed to care for the poor and for the marginalised. And so he went out when he had spare time, dressed up in shabby clothes, looking like a tramp. And he sat on park benches and tried to bring the story of Jesus and of hope to rejected alcoholics and homeless people. The irony is that the strict standards of the Bible college said that his behaviour brought disgrace on the dignity of Jesus. I mean, how extraordinary. Here's someone who seeks to follow the ways of Jesus and is rejected because of that. And so having been rejected by the theological seminary at the top level and the Bible college at the next level, his faith, not so much his faith in God, but his faith in the system became severely shattered. You know, Vincent, came to my attention through many of his paintings, but two of them impressed me most. There is one of his paintings that I think must have been painted when he was shifting out of his more formal religious connections. And in that particular painting, he has a picture of his father's Bible he deeply respected his dad and mum. He thought they didn't really get it. They didn't fully understand the radical nature of the message of Jesus. But he still loved them and respected them. And he loved his dad's old Bible. And so in this painting, there is a picture of his dad's old Bible, which is sort of a bit crinkled and old and obviously well-read and well-used. And then down in smaller profile is another book. And if one looks carefully, the title is clear. It's another French novel. As I began this little spot, I said to you, Victor Hugo's French novel moved me. Well, this painting moves me because there is the old Bible that Vincent dreamed of. And down in the corner is another French novel. 
a novel, the title of which is Le Joie de Vivre. I'm sorry if you're French and I haven't um, said that well, but it is in French, The Joy of Life, by the novelist Emile. I looked at that and the first time I saw that painting, I actually cried because I think I saw in that painting what most secular people just don't see. He was a man who longed to follow Jesus, who'd been kicked out of two religious institutions, who loved his mum and dad, who were devout Christian ministers and minister's wife, and yet for all of that, he felt they missed the point of the radical nature of Jesus. As I looked at that painting, the old Bible that so shaped his longing to serve broken and marginalised people, almost shadows the French novel, Le Joie de Vivre, The Joy of Life. Where do we find the joy of life? Was Vincent's mental ill health that we so often talk about, simply that he suffered from a mental illness, was it the profound disillusionment that despite all he saw in Jesus, the church just didn't get it? And what he'd longed to do and how he'd longed to serve had been lost. You know, my friends, Vincent's favourite song, according to what I've read of his letters, was tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear. His favourite Bible passage was the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor. Liberty to the captives. The great words of Jesus as his ministry was launched in Luke's Gospel. And I understand his favourite book is one of the most famous books ever written in the English language. The book called Pilgrim's Progress. The story of the human search for forgiveness and eternal life written by a man who I'll talk about in a future spot, who spent many years in prison tackling the system that was then run by the religious establishment too. Another religious establishment that didn't get it. And so John Bunyan suffered imprisonment and cruel outcomes for the writing of a story so like the story of the New Testament, The Soul's Search. The joy of life. I want to talk to that in the next spot. But I think Vincent knew the joy of life really was in his old, dear old dad's Bible. It wasn't in the French novel. But somehow those that gave him the Bible didn't give him an interpretation that suited the truth as we see it in Jesus. And I would want to say that I wish if I'd known Vincent, I could have told him what I want to tell you. And that is whatever the system says, Whatever an organisation that may choose to label itself as religious or Christian, 
Follow the song Vincent so loved. Tell me the stories of Jesus. I love to hear. Read the story for yourself. And where the church doesn't live it, don't spend your time being bitter against the church. Don't spend your time trying to find the joy of life in a secular novel. But find it in the one who said, I am come that you may have life. Van Gogh, I think, all his life sensed that's where the truth could be found. How sad that those who claim to be the keepers of the truth possibly even drove him to mental illness. But I'm not sure the lights ever quite went out in the heart of Vincent. I hope the light doesn't go out in your heart.